Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. Hello friends, hello, hello. Um, give me a second here. I have changed my setup slightly to I just let me fix my audio here. Hi, my name is Steven. I'm some guy on the internet. My mom always calls me that. Every time I call her, she says, well, 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 if it isn't some guy on the internet. And I'm like, mom, please, I have an identity. I'm a real person. And she's like, haha, yeah, right. I'll never believe you. You're some guy on the internet. Some guy on the internet. All right. I think that will do us fine. Sorry, my OBS is not letting me look at my audio mixers unless I'm full screen. I'm trying to fix the crashing issues that we've been having. So I um, have my setup switched around a bit. I'm strongly underlit right now, which uh, we're just gonna have to be okay with, I've decided. I'm just gonna look scary on this one. It's appropriate for Halloween. Halloween appropriate for me to be underlit. Hello, Kari, Travis Nix, Nunu, Pedro Assisi, Shogunat, John D. Harvey, Benjamin Lyons, Spectacle Society, Michael Schlechter, Christopas Greensea, Saman Kutcher, The Precious, Nick Ravioli, Art Apprentice, Hugo Paz, Michelas, Terry Hone, Harrison Snat, uh oh, Emiliano Sunshine, Besley, and Medi Outsquit. Hello, everybody. Beautiful, concise essay, by the way. It's now a link I share with my family who wish to discuss the topic. Thank you so much for sharing it. I tried to keep it, um, you know, even at 48 minutes long, that's still pretty tight considering the huge amount that there is to talk about with that subject. Um, I did try to keep it as concise as possible. I cut out probably another 20 to 30 minutes of stuff. There was uh, even more arguments in the original version, but I trimmed it down to the most brutally, the ones I really couldn't bear to cut. 
but there was originally more. It was just uh, ungainly long, and I just really wanted to get the word out there and have the discussion spread, so I didn't want to bog it down. Joseph Marzelliano, my precious friend, how are you? So we seem to have solved our frame dropping issues. Stream is very smooth, but um, my setup in general has been crashing a lot. So uh, I am trying this stream with less monitors plugged into my computer. We will see if that helps. If that doesn't, I have about five other ideas for what it could be. So we will run through those, but um, apologies if stream dumps out at any point or becomes unstable or anything like that. We've just had some things go wrong with it lately. But I got a good feeling, got a real good feeling. Have you seen any Skynet vans outside your house since your last video? Tons, nothing but them. Every car on the street since the release of the video actually got replaced with a nondescript black van that has an unusual amount of audio visual hookups and antennae hanging out the top. Little weird, little weird. Yeah, there's not a single normal car left on my block. We're gonna sketch some new stuff, but on the last stream we did last week, we started this uh, sort of alien looking kind of guy on the right. I just wanted to poke at him a little bit, see if I could find what I really wanted from the idea. But um, I'm not sure I feel fully, fully committed to him or anything like that. But I do want to give, you know, classic. The ideas that seemed great on Friday, you look at them on Wednesday or Monday and you're like, eh, not so interested in that. But, 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 instead of conceding to that, I want to honor my Friday idea and give it a shot. Give it a shot. Usually when I do something real colorful like this, it's like a, an organic kind of a thing, but I want to see if I can do um, this colorful opalescent alien sort of a thing while also keeping it... Um, some implication that it's like armored. Now it might be organic armor, but I want some intentionality to it, some sort of link to the other designs that are very fantasy inspired. Slash Renaissance inspired, medieval times inspired. Can you guys hear the music or is it too low? Just want it very ambient, very background. Love the AI video. It was a little depressing knowing the full scope of reality, but can't keep me down for long. Gotta continue fighting. Yeah, don't give up. Don't be depressed. I mean, it's, it's, um, here, let me turn on a light because uh, my green screen is clipping weirdly. Don't be depressed. Um, this is not the time for depression or sadness. Uh, that's why we're here, drawing, right? That's why streams need to continue. That's why you got to draw. It's like, this is something we're going to have to contend with, but it's no reason to not be happy when you're at your drawing table, right? We have to honor the beauty of the act, right? So. That's why we're here streaming. That's why it's peaceful drawing number 8,797,023. If we're going to contend and we're going to defend ourselves and we're going to try to navigate our way through this totally topsy-turvy thing, um, the practice needs to be strong. So the best thing you can do, um, there's other things we need to do, but the best thing you can do if it's not already handled is enjoy drawing. Enjoy drawing, first and foremost. Let's 
see if that helps with my hat wiggle. Oh, maybe slightly, not too much, whatever. Man, whatever. Like anybody cares about the quality of my green screen mask. Nobody cares. I don't like the noise that light is making. C. Buckthorn says, do you ever draw your dreams? I also wonder if you dream of scenes and subjects as out there as your art. I do not. I think because I spend all day making art and imagining things. Um, my brain is not so interested in doing that when dreaming. I have very boring dreams. They're not, they're usually not um, extremely visually interesting. I think I have the same uh, boring dreams as most people, you know? I have stress dreams where uh, I forgot to go to a class all year and I need to graduate in high school. Like I have those same archetypal ones that everyone has. I think by the time I go to bed, my brain is burnt out on um, coming up with new exciting images. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen something in a dream that made me think I need to draw that. I don't think it's happened even once. Good morning, Boxer Wing. Geronimo? Geronimo says, hey, Steven, I love the drawing uh, Man at a Crossroads that you did a while ago. Did you do it for a specific reason? It was what, just one of my personal drawings. It wasn't for a commission or anything like that. Um, it had a specific emotional impetus, you know, but it wasn't for like a, a hard, practical, specific reason. Lachos says, hello, Steven, just passing by to express my love. Much love to you, Lachos. Happy drawing today. Good luck in your life and your day and all your creative endeavors. May your drawings be satisfying. May your sketches be exciting.
Are the swords of the character you're drawing also made of that sort of organic material or is it a separate object? It might be interesting if the swords were somehow connected to it. I don't know yet. I just have those in there as placeholders for now. We'll see what I actually wind up doing. It could be either because uh, these demon designs, it's like just because the demon is manifest as this sort of alien looking thing right now, um, they're not limited to any form in this world. So it could be the, uh, the separate object as well. Could go either way. Evan Nave, how are you, bud? Good to hear from you. How much of your drawing sketching is exploratory compared to fully intentional, or is it a balance between the two? Um, I would say exploratory wins on stuff like this. It takes me a long time to get to a place of intentionality with stuff like this. It'd be different if I was on a job. If I was on a job, it'd be intentional the whole time, because. Um, there's usually very strict criteria, but stuff like this, just working for myself, largely exploratory. And then in the exploration, pretty far into the exploration is where I usually figure out what my actual intention would be. But yeah, much later down the road. The return of Beanie Steven, yeah. Well, it was nice and cold in here this morning and now I already feel it warming up again. I'm not too sure how long the beanie will be out. I had wanted it to stay cold in here. Lamework says, hello, Stephen, quick study question. Would you recommend students view fundamentals are troubleshooting for their projects instead of designing their study as a broad curriculum outside of classes? Yeah, usually. Yeah, I think um, if you don't focus the fundamentals with an intimate knowledge of what the hell you're actually interested in doing day to day, um, they basically just become an ever receding horizon of things that you can't master, <laughs> you know? You can, you can of course achieve mastery, but no one can achieve mastery of all of the fundamentals. Most of your favorite artists, you probably know them for one particular thing and you wouldn't say they're great at everything, right? So you're not gonna be any different from them. Um, and even the idea of mastering a fundamental is sort of fallacious. It's like, 
Well, once you reach a level of facility with something like anatomy, that people would call you a master of it, at that point, you will have been so steeped in its nuance and how broad it actually is that you will realize that the, it's only getting, the, the line of mastery from your level of taste is only further away now, actually. You realize just how deep the technical knowledge can go. You'll realize how much artistry and taste actually influence something that seems objective like anatomy. Um, so you, if, if you're gonna focus only on that, you're gonna screw yourself, you know? So you need to be constantly reminding yourself day to day, what's, what are you actually interested in, right? How much anatomy do you really need for the kind of pictures you wanna make? How much color, how much design, how much perspective? And you need to base everything that you do on that knowledge, but you're never gonna be able to make those distinctions if you don't do your projects, if you don't constantly attempt the kind of work that you actually want to be doing. So, as I say, and as people struggle with uh, amazingly, just like constantly, um, even as a beginner, even as an early intermediate, even as someone who feels that they just haven't studied enough stuff, you must keep making your pictures. You must keep attempting the kinds of things that you like doing. And is it gonna be uncomfortable? Yeah. Are, the, are you gonna make bad pictures? Yeah, you're a beginner. You have to learn how to be comfortable with that. It's like, you can't have these unrealistic expectations of yourself where you think that the world is expecting from you pictures that look like the works of masters that you enjoy that they're doing 40, 50 years into their career. Um, those are really unhealthy, un, unrealistic expectations. Know that they're gonna be bad, but they're going to be a huge part of the educational process. And the beautiful thing about working on those projects is that even if they're bad to you, even if they don't miss, even if they don't hit the mark of your taste, you made a product. So unlike most people when they start out, you will have things that make sense to share even if they don't look like a sergeant painting, right? And if you're very shrewd, you might wind up having a book that you can sell or a sketchbook that you could share or a portfolio that you could submit to an indie company or some smaller publisher or something like that or God knows, submit to a big publisher and you might just hit the right thing at the right time and get a job way before you were supposed to, which is also fallacious. Whenever you get a job, it was just the right time, baby. Hi, Steven, could you suggest me a book in order to learn light? Any answer from the chat is also welcome. Um, if you want the objective nature of light how to draw by scott robertson is pretty exhaustive on that most people will bounce off of it because it's too exhaustive um so if you want just the raw info how to draw by scott robertson and color and light by james gurney but if you want the artistic info like how to use light I think almost nothing beats Frame Dink by Marcos Mateo Mestre. As a beginning point. It's a book about storyboarding, really, or let's say cinematic storytelling. Um, and it's done in a very particular style. It's done in harsh black and white inks. Not harsh, his style is beautiful. I'm just saying it's mostly pure black and white. Um, but if you generalize the concepts, there's few better books on the artistic use of light. You'll just need to adapt them to the way that you work.
Hi Steven, if you know any, what are other drawing art streams do you think are good for beginners? Any beginner oriented YouTube channels that you like? Beginner oriented. Um, Proko stuff is good for beginners. He's got a, a lot of free videos on his channel that cover the absolute basics, like, um, yeah, just the absolute basics. They're not necessarily super in-depth, but it's got a wide breadth. Jam Production says, Hey Steven, want to thank you for your talks and insight on AI lately. As a concept student in New Zealand, I felt the wave of dread coming over my peers and lectures. Nice to know we're not alone. We are never alone. The art community must band together. We've all got to support each other. You're not alone. You got me in your corner. Things are going to be tough. Things are going to change, but... We will always make Paramount the joy of drawing, the joy of designing. It sucks though, I mean. I know. It must be a hard time to be a student, to just like be learning stuff in class where you're all um you're all like oh are we gonna use any of this stuff you know <laughs> I, that's got to be stressful in fact i know that's stressful because um when i was in concept school we were um we were learning a lot of very difficult very time consuming drawing abilities that at that time what we were contending with was that uh not for the whole industry, but for certain sectors of the industry, like film, for example, um, it was clear that people weren't really going to be drawing much anymore, that people were going to go to photography, that is to say photo bashing, and 3D. So we had a little bit of that when I was in school, that feeling of like, oh, things are changing, and are we actually focusing on the right stuff, quote unquote? It's stressful. This is a little different because when we were going through that, it was kind of clear that that was, you know, if you found that what you cared about most was drawing, right? You wanted the joy of making something with your, of do, with doing, by doing this, right? By just moving your hands, if that's why you wound up funneling into this world, rather than a love for the product or the, that particular industry, um, you were able to just say, all right, well, I'll switch to animation or something, you know, where... Um, it's more likely that drawing will continue to be relevant because it's just much more stylized and so many, there's just more things that need to be parsed, changed and broken down as opposed to things that are largely realistic, like live action film and things like that. Um, this is a little different because the AIs will affect everything from animation to live action, all that. And by a little different, I mean a lot different. <laughs> Hannah Umit says, hey, thanks for the essay you made yesterday. My pleasure. Thank you for watching it. Robert made a community post about it and it really took the words out of my mouth. Um, Robert, do you mean cynics? Is that who we're talking about? I'm assuming you mean cynics, but I'm just clarifying.
Hey, it's Steven. I've been told I should improve my anatomy skills. I know the course is good for that, but do you need to relearn basic perspective and form skills? Done it three times now. Uh, for the record, the course is not an anatomy course. Um, I would not say that it's good for learning anatomy. Anatomy is sort of its own course of study. Um, the anatomy dovetails with everything that happens in figure drawing, which includes things like form and being able to invent and control shapes, but anatomy strictly construed, that is to say, learning the names of muscles, origins and insertions, the general layout of the human body. At the initial level, that is really more of a medical pursuit than an artistic pursuit. And then you, in, you interweave it with the artistic pursuits. Um, but no, you do not need to relearn perspective and form skills. If you wanna start the journey of anatomy, get something that is very objective uh, about the musculature. So check out Artistic Anatomy uh, by, Paul, by Dr. Paul Reicher. Check out um, Elliot Goldfinger's Anatomy for the Artist. Check out um, Ray's Anatomy, that's Ray Bustos's book. Look for something that gets pretty objective and just explains muscle to muscle to muscle. Proko also has a lot of free anatomy videos out there. In fact, I would recommend starting with Proko's free anatomy videos just to like get on the right page about this is what we mean about objective anatomy information watch those to see um, what that actually looks, feels, and sounds like, and then continue your deep dive from there. When is your debate with Evan Amundsen? Um, I don't think that's going to be a debate, just to be clear. I think, uh, I think that's a conversation. As far as I know, uh, Evan, James, and I are basically on the same page about all this stuff. It'll be more like a, um, uh, what's the word people use? Circle jerk, that's it, that's right. How was being a leader during Chroma Corps? It was fun. I mean, they did all the work. All I did every day was I went into the uh, the team chat and I wrote an inspirational speech, usually a extremely bloody and aggressive one, basically being a warmonger. Good times. Where, how, when is this gonna happen? I don't know, James is setting it up. I think it just comes down to uh, Evan's schedule.
any lower profile art channels you recommend? Me. I'm low profile. <laughs> 70,000 subs. That's nothing. There's middle school girls cracking open chocolate eggs with a uh, 100,000 times the number of subscribers I have. <laughs> Let's see. If I'm serious, go check out um, one of the mods in this chat, Joey Mars, if you want sculpture talk. Uh, Janos Garrosh, who is in the chat sometimes, has a very good entertainment design focused channel. He teaches like, um, concept painting stuff and things like that in a more, you know, teaching the stuff kind of a way, like use these layers, do it in this process. I'm really more of a mind game kind of a guy. So I'd check them out. Let's see, who else? Who else is low profile? Um, you ever heard of Ahmed al -Duri? Most people haven't. Um, he's got a very fledgling channel, just starting out, sort of a beginner in drawing, but um, he's got some interesting stuff to say, and um, he draws pretty good. My friend Modern Day James, another baby channel, pretty low profile. But I think he's a, a stock to watch, you know? Give him, a, give him a sub, you know, he needs it. On the theme of studying fundamentals while doing projects, what if you're a beginner intermediate artist that only likes the act of drawing and doesn't have anything he really likes doing specifically? If you stay like that forever, then what's the problem? Like if you can own, and I mean radically own, if you can own the idea, the feeling, the reality that all you really care about is the act of drawing, just do it, ride it out. Don't add unnecessary crap to it. Don't do anything. Don't do projects, don't do anything like that. Just focus in on that. The difficulty, the difficulty is that most people cannot maintain that for a sustainable amount of time. You know, art takes a very long time to get good at. You're not gonna be, even the mood that you're in for one year is really not a big deal in art. The, the timelines in art are like four, five, 10 years long, you know? So, um, for most people, you get the occasional freak who does things very quickly, but that's, that's the very rare person and there's, um, uh, there's very little advice you could give that person. They're just, you know, they're ripping through it. Um, so the thing is that it's very difficult to actually maintain that pure love of only drawing for the time scales necessary. And most people will come to adapt, adopt other interests, will want to do other things, and will need to raise the stakes on their art. So before long, most people will find themselves wanting a comic, a project, a portfolio, a job, a certain amount of money, things like that. So um, while you don't have those feelings, while you don't have those needs, I would say don't mess with it. Just enjoy it, just enjoy drawing. Um, because the, the intimacy and familiarity with the act of drawing in a sort of raw sense, when you do come to want those other things, it will serve you well that you have spent so much time just developing a personal and loving relationship with drawing.
Steven, when do you think your relationship with art truly began? I don't mean when you started drawing or when you started taking it seriously, more like when did you start loving it? Uh, I think I think I had that early. S something about the beauty of in the act of drawing clicked with me very uh, very early. If you join the Patreon, I have a series on there called um, Drawing Diary, where I'm trying to remember everything about my art journey. It's almost like an art memoir that I'm writing far too early because I'm only 32. But um, I'm doing it sort of as an example of an exercise that I often give to students who don't know how to make personal work, where I advise that they journal about everything that has already happened in their life as if it was pregnant with meaning. Every little banal nothing thing, just assume, uh, unlike you usually do, that it actually means something, that it's deeply meaningful, um, and just write about it and see what comes out. Um, so I'm doing basically an audio version of that, that advice that I've given many times. And in the second episode, I have my sister on to talk about my initial relationship with drawing because I don't remember it, but she does because I started so young. And um, by all accounts, I was freaked out by the mysticism of it uh, from a very early age. And uh, I, from, I don't know, five or six, I insisted on carrying my sketchbook with me everywhere. And I would, if we left the house and I forgot my sketchbook, I would make my mom turn around and I had to have it. I needed to bring it with me. I think I always really loved it. Hi, Steven. I'm having trouble committing to a design. What do you recommend to get through this? Show it to a friend. Get different eyes on it. Show it to a teacher or a mentor or a peer group or even someone who doesn't know that much about art. Just show them and see if, like, don't say much. Just show it to them and be like, what do you think? Like, what is this? What does this mean to you, right? And see if their first reaction without you prompting them that much fulfills your requirements for the design. Now remember, it's very important to not, not prompt them too much because that will incline them to give you the answers that you're seeking. Just show it, ask them, what is it? What do you think? And of course, if you, that's not very helpful if you don't actually have any design criteria, right? Like you need to know what you're going for, for that to work. And if you don't have any design criteria, then that's actually the source of your problem. It's just like, you can't settle on a design because you don't know what you want. You don't know what the design actually is. You're just doing random stuff, which is fine, you know, but not if you're, if you're trying to make something with intent, if you're trying to put together a portfolio or something like that.
Thank you, Brody. Oof. Rain Ameliart says, is it normal to hate doing art sometimes due to inability and achieving an ideal standard in mind, mostly from lack of skills, let's say? Yeah, it's completely normal. It's not optimal and it's unrealistic to expect yourself to um, be able to achieve to the level of your taste early on in your practice, but um, it is normal. There's nothing abnormal about that. But I suggest you dump it, get rid of it. It's like, it's, it's necessary in the beginning to accept that you're gonna make some work that just isn't up to taste, you know? If you were talking to a friend who wanted to be good at art, you would tell them that, right? You're being exceptionally hard on yourself, but imagine you were trying to give your friend advice. Don't you think you'd, it'd be so clear to you in that context that it's like, yeah, man, you just, you just started. Like, it's gonna be all right. Just keep going, don't give up. It's like one of the reasons you're interested in art is because there is a mountain to climb. Like, why are you getting bent out of shape? Because you're not quite nailing it yet. Wit, witch. Witch with the $5 donation. Thank you so much, Witch. Can't stay, but wanted to say God bless you for all you do for us artists. Take care and good drawing, Stephen. Thank you so much, Witch. You're very kind. Thank you for your kind blessings and thank you so much for the donation. I will turn it into life-giving coffee. And when I drink my coffee, I will go, ah, Witch. Ah, Witch. Ah, witch. Ah, witch. I promise I'll do that in the middle of the coffee shop. In the middle of the coffee shop with everybody watch. my new ringtone. Enjoy. One of the many services that I provide. Free ringtone material. I am a gracious and benevolent leader. Oh man, drawing is so... Fun. I love working in this murky soup. I mean, it's very colorful, but you know what I mean. Like everything's kind of blending together. It's all kind of wishy-washy. It's just so fun. It's just so fun. Emma Blomskog, how are you? Welcome, welcome. I hope anyone who was at Lightbox this past weekend had a good time. I was looking through some photos that people were posting in my Discord of the good old time they had. Good for them, man. I'm going next year. I don't care. I'm not missing it next year.
You should team up with Med and start an AI resistance podcast, bring big names to discuss the subject. If, if I made an art podcast, I would totally name it The End of Art Podcast. It would be called The End of Art Podcast. The podcast logo would be a nuclear explosion made up of paintings, and like a mushroom cloud made up of paintings. And um, the tagline would be, the world's most important art podcast isn't about art, and we would never discuss art. We would just like critique insurance commercials and free associate about movies and just generally have no audience. dad mode then is the podcast that i just described considered a dad mode podcast look i'm old all right you accusing me of being a dad dad age dad energy well biologically speaking i'm not a dad yet but i might be someday and maybe i'm there all right you're all young you don't know what it's like all right this decrepit flesh vessel this decaying human husk i'm being digested by reality moment to moment i'm just not on the level of you young people all right, and so I depend on you to keep me up to date on the half slangs that are being used to describe different types of media. So are dad mode podcasts a thing or not? Let me know as well as other things. All right, because I'm not hip the way I used to be. Okay, I used to be cool, I used to live in LA, I used to go around in the East Village of New York City, I was going to contemporary art openings, I was like, what's going on, man, I'm part of the world. Now I'm not. Way less cool now, way less cool. I need help. Steven has had too much caffeine. You know, I don't act like that because I'm over caffeinated. I act like that because I'm live on the internet, <laughs> just for the record. It's just cause the cameras are on. Caffeine's got nothing to do with it. I swear, I swear, please believe me. I'm having trouble choosing a good starting point going towards a concept I find cool or interesting. Any tips? Illustrate a book. That's my usual go-to tip. I think um, for anyone who's interested specifically in illustration and design, 
I think if you've never tried to illustrate a book, that, let me be more specific, a short story, um, it's one of, it should be near the top of your priority list, I personally think. You can do it to some, you can do it with something that you came up with if um, you've been working on it for a long time. Um, or, or, you know, do whatever you want. You know, sorry, I, I often revert to the kind of language that I use in like a college class where the students actually have to do what I say. Don't, we're not in that context. Do whatever you want. Um, it's very important to remember that you can do whatever you want in art. But um, I would highly recommend doing it for something that you didn't write, but something that you're a huge fan of and um, keep it short. I would do a story that takes less than four hours to read. And even four hours is very long. You, you won't be able to get through um, designing even most of the stuff in a four hour story. illustrate a kid's book. I mean, it can do, it can be anything. I just, for, for people who are illustrators and designers and who want to go into those fields, um, I recommend doing something that you're a big fan of because you need to have a lot of thoughts about what is actually demanded from the designs. Um, unless you're a pro level writer, you probably haven't ridden something to the amount of depth necessary that you have tons of solid constraints about it in your head. As the creator of the thing, you're probably confused about a lot of stuff, unless, like I said, you're a very seasoned writer. Um, but let's say you decide to illustrate Harry Potter and you're a huge pan fan of Harry Potter. You probably have Nothing but thoughts about what Harry looks like, what he doesn't look like, what his character arc is, how he starts versus how he ends, what kind of clothes he wears. Um, for the, the common rooms in the houses, you probably have nothing but thoughts about how Gryffindor's common room would be different from Hufflepuff's um, common room, things like that. It's like the fact that you're a big fan of the thing makes it so that you have tons of constraints about it. And then if you need to, you know, file the serial numbers off of it later, that's not that hard. You know, you can just obfuscate some of the tight branding and things like that. But um, you need solid structure. For the sake of practice in something as broad and as difficult as design, you need solid constraints. I see co coffee overdose in your eyes. Don't break your heart, old man. Don't break your heart, old man. This is uh, this is tea. This is black tea. Chai, sweet spice chai. Just one bag. Yeah, I am definitely not over caffeinated right now actually oh i'd know when i'm over caffeinated it's just energy it's just uh there's 186 people watching me <laughs> better than caffeine is um the fun of performing i can't help it just naturally i like uh I like when the cameras are on. It's fun, it's fun to perform. It gives me energy on its own. Makes it easy to stream too, because even when I'm exhausted, even when I'm under caffeinated, um, 
I can just start the stream and I know once it's going, I'll be fully awake, you know? Once people are in here and it's, um, it's time to iterate the ritual, then I know that it'll even out my mood, my energy. Lights, camera, action. You should try it. I think now's a good time to start streaming art for anybody who's interested in that. You know, with all the robots around, prove you did it, you know? <laughs> I think it's a good time to stream art. Hi, Steven, could you share tips on how to hold a tablet pencil or how you do it? Just like that, normal. What is this called, the tripod grip? Just a writing grip. I don't do anything special. As far as I can tell, that's really the only way to hold a tablet pencil, at least this kind. Maybe the iPad would be different, but with this kind of pencil, it's like, there's no benefit to overhanding it and trying to do like this because only the very tip matters. So I never change it from this. Just hold it regular. Some hold it a bit further back to stay looser. Who would do that? Who would do that? I'm disgusted by those people. I mean, this is, you know, this, this right here, this is ethically right, morally right. Up here, moral gray area. Dubious. Anyone who I would see holding it back here, I'd be like, that's, you know, you might have a reason, you might be confused, but it's, it's concerning. Back here, I would never associate with this person. This is openly advertising that they are one of the most chaotic, dangerous, and malicious kinds of people on the face of, their, of the earth. I would never talk to this person. I would avoid eye contact. Behavior like this is horrifying in the extreme. It's disgusting just to demonstrate it. I have cold chills running down my spine. It's hideous. It's all wrong.
pretty interesting. I mean, I don't hate the design. It is appropriately alien. It is very strange. I can't tell quite what it is. It, do it doesn't belong on this sheet with these two other guys. They're far too different. He needs to be on his own page. The guy all the way on the right. Preferably with some more variations on that theme. But I don't hate it. There's something there, something strange. Maybe if you change his color, he'd fit. No, it's not really about the color, I don't think. It's the overall, the unreality of the design. The other guys are just, they're some sort of, they have an animal head and they have pretty normal armor, all things considered, you know? But this is just a completely different, thematically a completely different kind of design. looks much more sci-fi the way it came out. He's so cool though. Well, he's not going anywhere. He just needs to be on a different sheet. He just don't belong with uh, these buddies over there. He ain't going anywhere. Pandemonium has room for all kinds of demons. Up, Pops. I'm alright. Pops is alright. Steve, have you ever been called a turkey? Have I ever been called a turkey? Um, let me think about that. Let me quickly rewind my memory to all of my interactions with my voluminous detractors. And let me try to recall the various calumnies that they have flung against me. Um, have they ever called me a turkey? think so. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think so. That is one insult I have managed to avoid.
All right, let's sketch around for something new. What do I have here in this untitled? That's nothing. Let's use this. Onwards to new things, more drawings, more, more. Let's see, what do I want? Do I want something more earthy? Do I want something more alien again? I could do a variation on the alien thing and do like a wide one, a thicker one. Let me just free sketch for a bit, see what comes out. Do you think it's a good idea to start new projects before finishing your current ones? I'm usually working on a bunch of stuff at once. You just gotta watch your intent, you know? If you're only starting a new one because you're really close to the end of the first one and you're sort of like afraid of finishing it, of having to share it, find out if it was worth it, all that kind of stuff, then it's probably not a good idea to start a new one. But I don't know. I know very few artists who do only one thing at a time. You know, art is so caught up with our, our moods and our impulses and our emotions that for the most part, most of the artists I know, we got a few things on the table so that um, as our moods ebb and flow, there's a better chance that there's something we want to work on at any given time. Hello, Janos. For the people who were asking for channels earlier, I mentioned Janos Garash. There he is. There he is. Good entertainment design channel.
Steven, do you do oil painting? Uh, I've just started doing it again. I've done it on and off over the years. I go through periods where I do it a lot and then I fall off. It's been a while. The last time I was doing a bunch of oil painting was like 2016. I think that was the last period I went through with that. And then before that, I used to go out in plain air in oils a lot. Would you take a quick dive in the metaverse? Uh, I have a VR headset. I've done a bunch of stuff in VR. If you're talking about the specific Facebook metaverse, uh, I don't know. It doesn't look too interesting right now. but I haven't really been keeping up with it. I've seen people have been like dunking on it a lot lately, but um, I haven't actually seen what they're making fun of. I don't know if there's like a embarrassing screenshots or lame products or something like that. I haven't been keeping up with it. Steven, will you do a sketchbook tour someday? Yeah, I would just need to put in the, uh, I need to uh, go in there and flag uh, any nudity on the pages first so I can skip those pages. Just requires a little bit of pre-work if I wanna put it on YouTube.
And you're so fast? Well, I've been doing this a long time. Usually the key to going fast is having your priorities straight. Knowing how to focus on form and primary shapes and things like that first usually makes it easy to go quick. You get the course. I mean, you get the course. Now that the AI video is out, I'm so excited to get back to working on this pandemonium stuff. I also want to go back to the uh, last judgment sketches that we were doing a while ago. Just that, getting that AI video out and like doing the drawing for it, writing the script, researching the stuff, like that was really gumming up the works. I'm excited to just chill now and go back to some of that stuff I was working on. How important is it to draw in a sketchbook if you draw digitally, says Peanuts. Um, you know, it just comes down to the individual. You know? If you have no interest in it, if your only interest right now is really just in pure digital, don't worry about it. Just do what you want to do. There is an immediacy and ease that happens in the sketchbook that is hard to replace or to substitute, but I don't think you should force yourself in any way. Did you figure out what was causing the issues with your stream? Yeah, for the dropped frames I did. It was one of my lights actually. Weird, I know. I know makes no sense but I can literally turn it off and on and when it's on I get a quarter <laughs> I get a quarter of my frames dropped and when it's off been streaming for hours zero drop frames I can literally just tank my stream and fix it just by flicking its switch so I don't know what that's about I have been getting crashes as well recently, and that part I have not figured out. I'm testing a possible solution um, on this stream. I'm streaming right now with only two of my monitors on instead of uh, three, because um, I think it has something to do with my three monitor setup, because uh, I really started getting the crashes when I got the my um, Huey on drawing tablet, so. I'm testing if they stop, like, is it the Hueon or is it that I'm using three monitors when I used to only use two? So, old lamp might be drawing too much power. That's what I think it is, but other, other people I've asked are like, that wouldn't do it based on the kind of light. So I'm not sure. All I know is that for now, drop frames are fixed.
Have you checked to see if it's your graphics card? Well, I have a, I'm on an iMac, so I can't like go in there and look at my graphics card or check it. I up, I have the updated drivers, you know, it's all um, the most up to date. But um, I think if I wanted to look into that more, I would need to start doing uh, rollbacks actually, which is um, its own can of worms and uh, it's further down the list of things to check, so. We'll see. I hope it's just this, cause uh, I have no problem with just when I stream, just unplugging one of my monitors. And then just uh, turning it back on when I'm off stream. So I hope it's just that, fingers crossed. So far, this stream been going for a while, you know? Usually it does <laughs> when it's gonna crash, it crashes after I've been streaming for like two to three hours, but um, so far it's promising. I ran some tests of common crash scenarios earlier in the morning and nothing happened. Um, but we'll see. That's just how it is with tech. Crashes are, you know, something updates, suddenly everything goes wrong. You gotta figure it out. It's like, and you'll fix it and it'll be fixed for a while. And then again, you know, in a few months or so, something will update and break everything again. So it's just the classic ongoing tech struggle. I'm not bent out of shape about it. At least not now that I'm, I'm less worried about the crashes than um, the drop frames. Cause the drop frames were totally um, confusing to me based on um, how long they were happening and uh, all of the tests I had run. The crashes, it's like, that's more typical. I'll figure it out. You can't crash a piece of paper. Indeed, you can't. Unfortunately, when you're streaming a video of you drawing on that piece of paper, the stream can crash. <laughs> and your drawing remains, but you lose your stream. Goodbye, Janos. Thanks for hanging out. Thoughts on painting in Photoshop instead with Clip Studio Paint? It's always gonna come down to preference. I think Clip Studio is an excellent alternative to Photoshop. 
I think in many ways it's much better than Photoshop. I tend to use Photoshop still because um, I'm very used to it. You know, I've been using it since I was like 12 or 13. So it's hard to shake its grip, but I think Clip is a much better product in many ways. MTA Art says, hey Steven, so I'm at the point now where I began to care less and less about seeing immediate growth and more about just showing up at the table every day, even if for just an hour, it feels good. That's what it's all about. As long as you do that, you're gonna get your growth. You're gonna be fine. Just keep going with that. It's a great place to be in. Let's say you have to draw something you don't like that much. How do you get through this, Steven? Well, I guess it depends how long you need to draw it for. I, um, if it's just something that's only going to take like even half a day, it's just like, whatever, just get through it, you know? Whenever I'm in that situation, I just remind myself like, how many half days have I let go by without doing anything? You know, it's okay to, <laughs> it's okay to do something that I have a good reason to do, even if I don't really want to draw it that much. Um, it's okay to do it even if I don't wanna draw it that much, um, if it's really not gonna take that long. If it's gonna take a really long time and I don't wanna draw it that much, um, first off, question the overall reason. Like, am I just drawing this for money? You know, is that why I'm doing it? In which case, maybe reassess some life choices and things like that. But short of that, which is a pretty meta discussion, at that point, I do think you should pump the brakes, step back, and try to find a reason to like it. Um, if it's something that you're gonna be doing for a long time and you really don't wanna do it and you have any creative control over it at all, it's kinda your fault. You get what I'm saying? Like, you should have designed it up front to be interesting to you. That's actually your number one priority when you're making art and you're only hurting yourself, the client, and the project if you find yourself bored to tears by something that you need to spend several days on. Um, it's not like, you know, sometimes we just get stuck in that situation, but if it's happening over and over again, you need to reconsider how you're doing your task. You need to be more thoughtful upfront, I think. Sam Lamb, how are you? Good to see you, Sam.
Well, thank you, Sam. And the weather is Midland in New York City. Midland. Steven, I love drawing. Thanks so much for coming to my TED Talk. I'm so glad. That's all it takes. You just got to keep loving drawing. Keep it up, everybody. Keep those drawings coming. Hold on, let me read something real quick. Sorry, I received a relevant email that I will need to look into after this. The weather is mid AF. I'll have to add that to the lexicon. Get my Steve Buscemi going on. Let's just put that sketch over there. Let me soften these edges because they will distract me. George Smith says, do you have any ethical guidelines for who you would work with? As in the art itself being fine or exciting, but the employer not so much. Um, that's a very personal issue for most artists, I think, because um, it's difficult for artists to be choosy in the current world because it's so hard to have an art career, period. So if I'm being perfectly realistic, I think in our current world, you if the money is an issue for you, right? A lot of artists are, they, they have another job that supports them or they're artists because they come from a background where money's not an issue, you know, they have money in their family or something like that. Um, if, if money, if you're not that, if money is an issue, I think unfortunately in the current era, um, it's really hard to be choosy for an artist. But if I seed that practical ground, right, which I totally get and I've been there and I've done stuff that I'm like, oh God, great. but. If, I'm, if I connect with what I really believe and my values, um, if the money is not an issue, if you can get there, I think you should be as strict as possible with your ethical guidelines, personally. I, again, this is the case for almost nobody or very few people because people need money and people want clout. Even if they have money, it's like there's a, a lot of them like, you know, they want to work in games so they can say they work in games. So they're going to, you know, no matter what, they're going to work on a game just to say they work in video games, even if they don't need to do it for the money. But those considerations aside, it's art. And I think you should, um, I think you should be as ridiculously strict with your ethical guidelines as possible. If you don't have any other constraints, I think you should work with basically no one that you don't like. And I think you should never do a project you don't like. Um, if you're lucky enough to be in that position, I think you should go for it because, um, art is one of the most personal things possible. Almost everybody connects it with their sense of self-esteem and what it is to be them. And you can, you might be the rare artist who doesn't do that, which is great. And if that's the case for you, find a way to chemically bottle that and sell it as a pill because I'll take it. Um, but for the rest of us, 
you will do damage to your artistic spirit over time if you do things you don't believe in and you do things in the, the wrong way or if you work with people who you just don't, you feel like they're manipulating you or using you and things like that. It will come to great on you. And um, it's not like there isn't ways to reverse the course of that and to defend yourself from that and to shrug it off and change your situation, but um, I don't think it's something that needs to be gone through at all, you know? Again, most people just will never be in that situation. But if you can, I say go as strict as possible. And otherwise, I consider every art career basically a tiny personal miracle. So for all of the people who do have very practical considerations, I would never judge you for any job that you have to do or person you have to work with personally. It's like, it's almost impossible to have an art career. It's so difficult. It's insanely difficult. So um, if you're feeding your family with it, I don't know, I wouldn't judge you. Any YouTubers similar to you who talk about the philosophy of art at a deeper level than what is normally discussed? You're my favorite one, looking for more content to draw to when you're off stream. Um, Ahmed Alduri, my friend, my good friend is a bit of a mix. He kind of does practical and the more spiritual stuff if you listen to some of his longer stuff. So I'd check out him. Um, you might just have to poke around a bit to find those from him. And um, Adam Duff, Adam Duff's another one. Do you think you could have an art career without YouTube? Yeah, well, I, I did. I didn't start my YouTube until 20, 2019. That's pretty recent, all things told. I didn't start my YouTube until 2019. And um, I have been a professional artist since 2020. I mean, um, 2010? No, 2011. 2011 was when I started doing my first jobs. Kind of a fiery gin guy over there on the left. I don't know if I'm into it. Let's look for something else.
Stephen, I've noticed your illustration subject matter interests align pretty strongly with Gustave Doré, but you don't mention him often when you're listing your faves or influences. Uh, are you big on the Doré man? I am, yeah. I usually list him as an influence when I'm talking about my um, Paradise Lost work and my Dante's Inferno work. He's definitely a big influence for that stuff. The first version of my Paradise Lost pieces were um, digital pieces that were directly inspired by his... Um, well, not his, but the uh, the etching style of his studio when they did their uh, all his famous pieces. Sam Lamb says, I have a question I'm pretty sure I know the answer to, but I'd love to hear it from your beautiful face. <laughs> Although I'm trying to balance skills-based with personal slash creative projects, lately I've been finding it beneficial for me to enjoy really ramping up skills. Although with my projects as a pole star, I feel like there's something about the first few years that calls for that. Do you agree? Like, I feel like art is always going to be hard, but the first several years feel clumsy. Um, yeah, I think, like there, there's nothing wrong. You know, I, I talk about project-based work so much because it's like a necessary medicine for the way that art gets taught these days. But there's nothing wrong with just getting caught up in a whirlwind of skills-based improvement, right? Like that's fun. That's a ton of fun. And it's, it's a different kind of rewarding because it feels so linear and immediate. And it's like, we gamify it in our heads. We're like, if I do this number, I'll see this much improvement, such and such, things like that. But um, I think that's fine as long as you know the skills you're practicing are actually relevant, aka, like you said, with the projects as the, as the pole star, right? If you've never done that, like I know you have, right? Because you were in workshop with me. Like I know we have checked in on what the heck you actually want to do, and even if that changes, ways to find out actually what the heck you want to do. But um, if you've never done that, that's where it's a real problem because then you spend lots of time doing, practicing skills that you're never going to use. And then that, that leads to burnout, confusion, things like that. So I think as long as you have checked in ever, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, getting caught up in these skill-based whirlwinds. You just have to really always be making sure that you you are developing the skills that are going to be relevant to you, what you actually want, and not just um, stuff we read online or stuff that we think every portfolio is quote-unquote supposed to have or something like that. And it's like those those beginner gains in art, right? Like to use a phrase from working out, um, the like, when you're early on in the journey, like first few years, and it's like progress is tr truly feels linear, right? You just feel like every day that you draw, you get better and things like that. Um, that's an addictive high. I mean, there's so few things better than that. Um, but the thing is that, and I hate to tell everybody this, it does, end it does the bell curve the curve does whoop flatten off and you do reach after a long enough time diminishing returns where every little one point that you want to get better requires more blood echoes runes whatever gamified way you need to think of it as it's like the levels get more and more expensive as time goes on and once you hit that area if you have not figured out for yourself 
what is fun to do about it when you're not leveling up easily, that's where most people get completely sideswiped and more people fall off the art wagon at that point than anywhere else. That's what kills careers, breaks hearts, ruins lives. It's like, that's the actual danger zone. And the dangers there are so serious that it must be taken seriously, I think. Steven, what would be good ways to figure out what we want to do? Um, journal about it is what I usually recommend. Writing. Writing is, um, just because you're do doing art doesn't mean writing isn't relevant. I think um, trying to put into words what the hell you're doing here um, is usually a magical experience for artists who have never tried it before. You'll, uh, you'll be freaking out. You'll be leaping around your house being like, oh my God, I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Just open up a document and try to write to yourself what you actually care about in art. I think you'll be amazed. No, I don't like these Roby designs. I'm just gonna get rid of that completely. Which tablet are you using? The Canvas 24K. Emma says, Steven, have you thought, have, have any thoughts on imposter syndrome? Have you experienced it? Hmm, not really. I've always kind of trusted myself. Um, my go-to thing here is that if you have imposter syndrome, you're not an imposter. Like from my personal exper experience, the people who are actual imposters, and they exist, there's actually people who are just, you know, they have no idea what they're doing and they're running stuff and things like that, they exist. But um, the people who actually are imposters never have imposter syndrome they wound up in those positions as an imposter because they've just, they just have the blithe self-confidence necessary to take every good thing that comes to them without the slightest self-consciousness. So if you have imposter syndrome, I can basically guarantee you're not an imposter. The real imposters never have imposter syndrome. <laughs> But the thing is with imposter syndrome, even if you know you're not an imposter, you still have massive doubts. At least for me, that's how it works. I mean, at that level, it's like, if it's really a situation where you know you're not an imposter, but you're still racked with doubt, that's beyond the realm of art. 
like at that point, it's at least to me, it seems clear that you are just lacking in compassion for yourself. And, you know, the usual platitudes apply here. You know, you've got to be patient with yourself. You've got to be generous with yourself. And you've got to imagine the advice if you were your friend. Imagine what a friend in your exact situation, what advice you would give them, right? You'd just want to shake them and be a friend you like, by the way. Not one of those acquaintances that you can barely stand, but they're part of the social circle. So you just like always kind of are nice. I mean, a friend you like. One of your friends who you're like, I love you. You're one of my best friends. I care about you. I'm so proud of you. You're too hard on yourself. Like you're doing great. Like, don't worry. One of those friends. One of those friends who it's easy for you to just feel that you wish nothing but the best for them. That if there was a button that would give them infinite money and infinite happiness and infinite resources and infinite fulfillment, you'd just smash that button so hard that you break it. One of those friends, imagine them in the exact same situation that you are. You'd never talk to yourself that way. You would never be so hard on yourself. You'd never entertain this whole imposter dumb thing, right? It's like, what is the actual nitty gritty nuts and bolts nature of imposterdom. It's like, you don't think you're good enough at your job? It's like, you'll, you'll figure it out. What's the problem? You don't know the tool, you'll learn the tool. You don't do that little thing quite good enough yet, you'll figure it out. And if it's really about a job that you're on, right? You, do you really think that you got hired by accident? Like, <laughs> again, unless you're, unless you're the boss's son or something like that, like you really don't have to worry about that stuff, I think. People don't get hired by accident, if only. No, 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 no. I'm just doodling mindlessly here. Let me review what I've got for these guys and go in a particular direction. Pandemonium. Let's open up everything. Hmm? Oh, there's ref files in there. Click, 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 click. All right, let's open those. I've got to run to the restroom. I will be right back. Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph, Joe, how are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months and then check back in with me? Hmm? Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, that's it's amazing. I hey, Doc, uh, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. 
<laughs> you wouldn't. I mean, you should do this. That's right. Wow. Born from Imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use Form from Imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking Form from Imagination if you experience any of these side effects, loss of interest in your personal projects, megalomaniacal self-confidence, hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for, drawing better than Steven Zapata, or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. Use the restroom. We've got files open. I'm just going to look at a bunch of files from the Pandemonium Demons folder. Push me in a particular direction. Let me just react to some things. It'd be kind of cool to do something really uh, melty like this, but put armor on it. Guys, do not judge me for eating peanut butter filled pretzel snacks. I get hungry. Elder thing wearing clothes. Maybe I could do that one. Hey, my like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Just a moa moa with a woman's face. It might that might be the best thing I've ever drawn. Might be. Kind of like this centipede crab thing, though. I was amazed then, I'm amazed now. Oh, we're all pretty amazed. Everyone's pretty amazed. Let's see what we can do with this guy as a starting point. Look, you guys know my rules. I like to end a drawing session on a win. You know, right now I'm not ending on a win. Well, actually, I'm fine with the last thing that I drew, but I mean, um, I like to stop a drawing session when I'm excited for something so that I know what's gonna bring me back for the next session. 
I know what I'll just be able to slide right into. So right now I don't have something that's like, ah, that's the ticket. So I want to find something so that I will have that. And then when I start the next drawing session, I'll just know what I'm going to sink my teeth into. Peak artistic expression. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. It's ludicrous to even have to mention it. It's like, we are, I don't know how else to put it, but just like, we're the king of art. We, the royal we, because I'm the king. I'm the high king of drawing. We are the high king of drawing. It can't be debated. There's no other valid viewpoint. It's not up for discussion. There's no way to disprove it. It's just the sad fact of the situation that I'm the high lord of drawing. And that that's it, that's that. End of the discussion. End of the discussion. So what kind of body would we want to do for this guy? So obviously if we do the centipede thing, then we could have a bunch of stuff going on here. Centipedes kind of have their nasty long guys up at the end there. Then is he just that? And then what if we don't want to go long? Maybe like some of the other designs, that's just his head. He's actually got a more humanoid body. Do you have courses other than Form from Imagination? Yeah, I have a bunch of um, Gumroad tutorials. You can get them on Gumroad and Proco. They're linked in the description of the video of the stream if you just click the uh, more info button. They're more just like shorter tutorial videos. Form from Imagination is my only um, like cohesive curriculum course. You know? The other videos are more about covering a single thing in a tighter time frame. Well, tight for me. They're still like hours long. <laughs> but I got a lot to say. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, Steven, how do you recommend sticking to a self-learning course? I always recommend getting feedback getting the version of the course that has feedback or something like that. And that's why that's why my drawing course right now is, um, you can only get it with feedback. <laughs> People who have taken my workshop will know that uh, that last week, I, uh, when I talk about uh, continuing education, it's like, uh, I think it's really hard to stick to a, a course in a self-learning capacity on your own. I mean, art is so, subtle and difficult and requires so many micro adjustments that I really think it's important to have some sort of accountability, some sort of 
like a little way to just knock you left and right to adjust your course. So um, yeah, unfortunately, my answer to how do you recommend sticking to a self-learning R course is don't self-learn it. Get some kind of feedback on it. Maybe do it with friends or something like that if you if you can't find a version that has um, uh, input from the teacher. Like go through it together so that you have some reason to post and to get to the end. But I really believe in getting fe feedback. It's, it's the rare artist with the self-confidence and the analytical ability to just completely guide themselves through the internal Zen combat that is the artistic journey. You know, it's a rare artist who can do that. My good friend, Modern Day James, says, yo, that red guy is beautiful. He's all right. Glad you like him, buddy. That was the second guy we drew on stream. I, I like this guy better. That was the first guy we did on stream. Do you think we could all benefit from a little more routine to our art practice? Um, I think most of us can. I think there's a lot of benefits to doing the practice regularly because um, ideas are strange things. They, um, we don't understand them. We don't understand what con conditions them exactly. Um, and they surprise us. So. I think when you have a routine, it encourages you to do art even when you're not exactly feeling like sitting down and doing art. And then usually what happens is that um, once you get going, you're glad you did it and it does feel good. Um, once you actually sit down, you find that you were going to enjoy doing art and then you have shown up in the ritual space to receive new ideas and new exciting things. Um, and it increases your exposure to good ideas and the opportunities to have them. So I think it is good for most people. Feels like more intense Yodorowsky's Dune. Nice. I could not be more pleased by a comment. How you doing, James? You doing good? People were asking me earlier if I knew any low profile uh, YouTube channels, art YouTube channels, I recommended yours. I was like, yeah, go give James a follow. He needs the help. some four on four hockey this morning at a boy are you winning son Hello, puppy. Yes. Hi, yes. Who's a good girl? How you doing? 
Yes, I know. I know it's so hard to be a dog. Nobody understands. They don't know how hard it is to be a dog. Everybody thinks it's so easy, but they've never tried it themselves. I know, I know. If they tried laying around for 16 hours a day, they'd find it drives them crazy. They have no idea the amount of dedication and discipline necessary to lay around for 16 hours a day and to fart in your sleep. <laughs> no one knows how hard it is to be a stinky little pup. Oh, I see what you want. You want a pretzel. All right, go on. Get out of here. Beat it. Reynola says, Stephen, I've dedicated all of my graphite sketch portraits of my son to you and his birthday sketchbook. You did not need to do that. That's incredibly sweet. It feels crazy for me to get tied up with um, something as personal as that. It's really wild. You honor me, truly. Thank you so much. I'm sure he'll love it. You didn't need to do that. That's wild. What a strange and beautiful world we live in, huh? Let me see, James is talking to Go Gohan Fan. Gohan Fan 31. <laughs> when it comes to design sketching, you feel not using undo in the early stage gives you a better result? Um, no, I, I, don't, I never even really think about undo. I just I use it indiscriminately, I don't care. It's not really consciously on my mind. Um, when I'm doing a sketch like this, like a design sketch like this, I'm not really consciously thinking about how I'm doing it. You know, I, I really try to concentrate on what the heck I'm doing, what the idea is, what I'm trying to communicate. It's like, if I tried to force nice effects by, with like the little, you know, the little artist things like, oh, only use straight to curve, or oh, don't use undo, or oh, make sure every shape has drive and force and rhythm. It's like, yeah. And sometimes you need to go through a period early on where you need to, you do need to think about all those things, but um, almost always, once you've sort of dropped the heat of that, once you're out of the moment, you look back and it's like, if you weren't paying attention to what you were doing and why, it's all for nothing. You know, you're gonna, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna mean anything. It's not gonna be the design you were looking for. It's not going to be relevant to the project, all those things, so. Um, when I'm doing a design sketch, I try not to think too much about the how, you know? I, I like letting the sketch be messy, honestly. You can always redraw it. You can always, if you're in digital, it's easy to just throw another layer over it and clean it up. Goodbye, Emma. Thanks for hanging out.
and then I want to put it off balance. So let's do this hand can be open and we'll put a sword or something in this hand. Do demons have pets? Of course! Here, I'll put, I'll give this, I'll give this demon a pet. sudden lag. Let me save that in case I crash. There, she has a psychically controlled flaming sword.
pretty tight. <laughs> Finally got a good YouTube rec for your argument against AI videos. I am now a fan. Welcome, perennial astronaut, to the glorious household of Steven fans. We're happy to have you. Oh, you want another pretzel, huh? You think you're gonna get it by, by whining at me? You think I'm that easy to manipulate? You know it ain't gonna go down like that. Come on, come on. Let's see, what was the head design I had for this guy? Let me move this closer. Can you draw a muscular demonic dog? I could, but the question is, will I? Lame works with the 1.79 pound sterling or euros. I forget which it is. No, those are pounds sterling. Thank you so much, Lame works. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. You're glorious. You're a glistening beacon in the long night. In the long dark night, I see you out there between the trees, flashing on and off, twinkling like a dancer on point. And as I crawl, scraping my belly against the wet leaves decaying on the forest floors, I head toward that I head towards that light and I say, Lame works. Lame works. I am coming. Don't worry. I'll be there soon, my dear. Soon. Wait for me. Wait for me. Danny didn't like that. She really didn't like that voice. Cecile says, Stephen, I love your videos about art philosophy and drawing. They've been a great help to me as I recently decided to become an illustrator and everybody around me tells me it's a bad idea. That's how it's gonna go with art. You know, it's gonna happen to a lot of us. People are gonna say it's a bad idea. That is why it is so important that we have an artistic community and that artists share their true thoughts, their true feelings, and what they are going through, because in so many ways, we are the only people we can turn to. Only other artists understand us and what we're going through and the nature of the journey. So those people may mean well, some of them may not, but it's an honor to have contributed, and I hope that you find many good artistic friends and inspirations along your journey, for they are your family in this cause. Unless someone has tried to be an artist themselves, they can't really know. They can't really understand the difficulties. They can't really understand the rewards. They can't really understand the urgency, the need to do it for so many of us. Can we really ask so much from them? Steven, do you have a favorite philosopher? And if yes, why them? Um, hmm, favorite philosopher. I don't know. I've agreed with many off and on. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. 
It's hard to beat some of the classics, like Plato and Aristotle. There's great stuff in there. Your voice is like from an RPG I'm playing. Nice. Came for the art, stayed for the drama and the singing. That's how I know you're a true fan. That's what true fans stay for. Voices and my world-class singing ability. The urgency is real. I'm sitting at work right now, entering data into a database while thinking about the stuff I wish I was drawing and painting right now. I know. It's an overwhelming feeling. How could others understand? We just want to draw so bad. We're your family, we get it. We also get the secret art stuff, like how you'll spend all day fantasizing about drawing while you're doing your data entry job, and then as soon as you get home and you can draw, you won't have the energy for it, and you won't want to draw anymore. And then you'll get angry at yourself, and then you'll sit there building up the desire again on the next day at your data entry job, and then you'll just get stuck in this infinite loop. It's like, how could anybody else understand that stuff? Artist to artist only. From what you know, do you know if there are any specific art styles or stylistic elements that are difficult for AI to understand and learn from? From what I know, no, but I'm not an expert on that exact, I'm not an expert on that part of the AI. I'm not an expert on any part of it, but um, as, as I understand it, if the data set is sufficiently large, which it's not as big as you would hope, for a lot of things, right? Uh, the num It seems to be going down, the amount of examples a AI needs to get decent copies of a certain style of result or, or method of working or something like that. If, it, if the data set is sufficiently large, it can produce any style or stylistic element. It's a complex issue though, because it's not just about the data set though. It's about how it interprets the data set, how parameters within the data set are weighted, how these data sets include both images and descriptive text. So the way the images are described makes a difference as well. There's a lot of factors. All right, I think that's a good spot. That I'm like, yeah, I know what I would do next or what changes I wanna make. 
So I think that would be a good spot to leave some gas in the tank. How long have we been streaming for? Over two hours, right? Oh yeah, we're coming up on three. And I'm getting hungry. It's past lunchtime here, so I think we're gonna wrap it up. I'll stay on for a couple minutes just to say goodbye. If anybody has any last second questions here or anything like that. Oh, good session. Good session. Have you heard of Drawbox, Steven? I'm going to give it a go to brush up on some fundamentals. I have, I've never done it myself, but a lot of people like it. Seems to be good stuff. Good luck with it. You draw those boxes, baby. Do you use Krita? I haven't tried it. I often recommend it to people because it looks good and it's free. So when people need a free solution, I bring it up, but I myself haven't tried it. Falls says, what the monkey? Boxerwing says, thank you so much for the stream, Stephen. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and keep on creating. Boxerwing1970, we love you. I hope your drawings go great, and thank you so much for the kind words. Hi, Nye says, Stephen, I remember one of your videos urging artists to write down some stuff, but I can't remember what it is, what it was you wanted us to write down, nor what video it was. I usually recommend trying to write down what you think actually matters in a picture. Like, what do you want to be in your art? What do you want your art to do, you know? I know that's still a little bit fuzzy, but um, that's usually what I recommend. Like, actually write out your opinion about why you're doing this. What are you trying to achieve? What should your work look and feel like? What should it do? What emotion should it elicit? I'm not sure if the video you're talking about is this one, but um, I think um, forget your goals, they were what brought you here. I think that's that one covers a lot of those ideas. Do you speak Spanish? Si, un poquito. Evergreen says, do you think in the near future we'll see AI shift from pattern recognition based learning to actual conceptual understanding of concepts like perspective, anatomy, composition, etc.? I think that's really difficult to say. I mean, it's nigh unto impossible to predict giant tech leaps like that, right? Because that begs the question like, what do we mean about understanding, right? It's like, how do you understand concepts like perspective? You know, it, it's difficult to even explain that, the part of it that we're intimately familiar with. So what would it mean for a robot to do that? Would there, would it need to be conscious? Would there need to be something it is like to be that robot to fulfill those criteria of conceptual understanding? If that's not there, what does it mean to understand a concept? Can you understand things without any sort of sentience? I don't know, I think it's too, I have no real clue. You know, it's, it really gets into hairy territory where it gets more philosophical than practical very quick. Um, on the, do I think things will change soon? I do think that personally. I do think, um, I find it hard to imagine that these things will have popped up like that and then just stay the way they are. I think things will continue to change. Do you get the course? I get the course. I mean, I get the course. I do get the course. So far, so far, I'm the only person to complete the course. I completed it by making it. So far, I take the crown. I'm the only person to have completed the course. C. Buckthorn says, do you ever wonder about losing your sight or any of your current abilities, whether due to circumstances or old age? 
and how you would take it in relation to your art life? I mean, not seriously. I mean, I've wondered it just, you know, musingly, but you know, not really seriously, no. It doesn't seem like a useful thing to worry about that I might suddenly go blind or something like that. Fortunately, I mean, I'm pretty healthy. You know, I'm, I'm in good health these days. Um, for what it's worth, my family has a run of good health, you know? I don't really find that useful stuff to worry about, you know? If I felt I was going to lose my eyesight, you'd better believe I'd take it seriously, but you know, worrying about, you know, the the stray tree branch that's gonna pluck out an eye is uh, doesn't seem super useful. Thank you, Seth Hat. Thank you, Green C. Have good days today. Good luck with all your art. Goodbye, Reynola. Thank you for being here. Are there any particular pieces of folk art you really enjoy? I don't know what you mean by folk art, like um, the folk art movement in the Americas and things like that. Um, I guess I can't name a particular one, but I've seen a lot of it in museums and uh, I've liked a lot of it. I like stuff that's really kind of uncanny, you know, things that are like very strange, a little bit camp, you know? I remember once I saw this very folk arty painting of like a, a doll done as if it was a portrait of a real girl and there was like a cat in it. And it was so flat and strange and just so uncanny. I really liked it. Really, really cool. Goodbye, Joseph. Metal Soup says, sup, my G. Well, I'm leaving Metal Soup. That's what's up. I'm going to go get some lunch. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being on the stream. Thank you for drawing today. You've got to keep drawing. Keep being creative. Keep spreading your creativity into the world. The world needs it. Um, be relaxed. Be peaceful. Enjoy your drawing moment to moment. Enjoy life moment to moment. And don't you ever forget that uh, mechanics are destroying your car every time that you take your car into the shop. And my number one piece of advice for any beginner artist out there is to never get maintenance on your car. Your car is super well designed, incredibly well engineered, and made with some of the best materials in the world. Stop taking it into the shop. If you leave it the hell alone, it'll run for 30 years with absolutely no problems. So stop taking it to mechanics that are breaking your car and making you bring it back in over and over again. Don't forget to stare at clouds and psychically turn them into different shapes by concentrating on them, furrowing your brow, and whispering the shape that you want them to become in a strange voice, like cloud, turn into a squeeze-shaped clude, or clude, turn into a triangle-shaped clude, clude. Don't forget that every time you go into the ocean, even though you can't see them, you are surrounded by a whirling ball of fish, long centipede-like creatures and dangerous sea snakes. They're right there. They're right there. They're directly under your feet. And if you let yourself float without touching the sand, if you let yourself float in the water without touching the floor for any longer than 3.6 seconds, the sand beneath your feet will open up and reveal the gaping maw of a giant squid, a gigantic Pacific octopus, or Though that's if you're lucky. It's probably gonna be other things, Lovecraftian things, esoteric things, arcane things. So be extremely careful every time you go to the beach because you take your life into your own hands. Not because of riptides, not because of drowning, not because of rogue buckets of Kentucky Fried Chicken rolling down the beach. It's because there's creatures in there and they're coming for you. If you ever get to go to space, if you ever get an opportunity to go to space, you should go. Take every opportunity to go to space. When you're up there, uh, stare right into the sun and melt your eyeballs. And uh, take a leak off the space station that you're at. Piss onto the earth from space. Now, when it first comes out, let's admit it, it's gonna be messy, right? It's gonna kinda shoot everywhere. But you just wait a little bit. Gravity will do its job. Gravity will do its job, and eventually, it's gonna get down there. And if you're really lucky, it'll hit one of your worst enemies right in the face. 
And isn't that what we all want? Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you wanna be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you wanna be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just wanna be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon.